Over the past two years, energy prices have soared to record levels, leading to some countries increasing their efforts to harness the potential of their available renewable power sources. Blessed with its sunny climate, Portugal is perfectly placed to accelerate its shift to solar, although you may not have seen a solar farm like this before. I'm on the Alcaba Reservoir in the south of the country to see a solar array from a different perspective. It's the size of five football pitches and is home to more than 12,000 photovoltaic panels. So you'd normally expect to see something like this taking up lots of space in a field. This is actually a floating solar farm and it's the largest of its kind in Europe to be located on a reservoir and it can generate enough electricity to power 1,500 homes in the local area. And it's a pretty impressive sight. Construction of the platform began in January 2022 and was finally moored in place five months later. By July, it was supplying power to a quarter of the population in the neighbouring Portel and Mora regions. With a price tag of 6 million euros, the solution isn't cheap. But energy firm EDP estimates the solar farm will recoup its investment in a decade. But there's a particular reason why the solar farm was built at this spot. Namely, its proximity to the Alcava Dam. The hydroelectrical plant only uses one third of the capacity of the power line, so we have two thirds available. And uh, then we, we, the objective was to use that available capacity to, to inject an additional renewable source, in this case solar. So we created this hybrid concept. So we combine solar and hydropower on the same power line, sharing the same infrastructure. But there are other benefits to having the solar platform on water. Being closer to the water surfaces, uh, we reduce the temperature of the panel and then we increase the efficiency of the panels. We observed uh, an increase in efficiency up to 10%, an annual average increase of around 4% uh, in increase of production. Large platforms like this one also cool water temperatures by shielding the surface from the sun. This not only reduces evaporation, but prevents the growth of blooms of blue-green algae, which can produce harmful toxins. But there is one rather messy downside to having such a large platform on the water. And, and one thing that I, I couldn't help but notice when uh, we were looking at the panels is the local birds uh, <laughs> leave some gifts behind. Yeah. How, how, uh, what kind of impact does that have and how do you manage that? When they are very dirty, it has a, an in, impact on the efficiency of the panels. We are doing some proof of concepts uh, with the robot. We have a, uh, the idea to have autonomous robots doing these cleanups uh, with some artificial intelligence also predicting uh, when is the best time to do this cleanup. And with thousands of panels, that's potentially a lot of cleanup. But that begs another question. With all these panels sat on a concrete platform, what's keeping the platform afloat? This is it. There you go. It's pretty mind-blowing to think that this can support hundreds of tons of concrete and solar panels. That's right. Doesn't seem like it, but it, it works. It's amazing. <laughs> These floating systems they will have to last around about 20 years, more or less. You have a lot of mechanical stress on the, on the platform. So essentially what we try to do is to design a compound that can have the best of both worlds. So recycled polyethylene and cork. But despite their advantages, it's estimated that currently less than 1% of the world's solar installations are floating. This is in part due to cost and being able to position panels at an optimum angle to maximise their output. But already new tech is being developed that allows a solar farm, like this one in the Netherlands, to track the sun throughout the day, rather like a sunflower does. It's claimed that sun tracking installations could increase energy production by a third. And so, the future looks bright for solar, where every country, landlocked or not, can become its own energy island. <laughs>